Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton bum bag. All right, so let's get this show on the road, shall we? Starting with the first question from Noodle Maiden. Do you think big bags are coming back in? I'm specifically thinking about the overly large Chanel flaps I'm seeing on influencers and fashion girls. All right, so do I think big bags are coming back? Absolutely, definitely, and I am here to welcome them with open arms. I mean, I love mini bags. I think that they're great, and being able to carry just the essentials is wonderful, and I do have a few myself that I absolutely love. However, in my eyes, in my opinion, nothing, nothing beats a big old bag, all right? I feel like kitchen sinks everywhere are rejoicing. But all jokes aside, I absolutely, I absolutely love larger bags. Now let me insert a picture of the oversized Chanel flap right now. I think it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. It's pricey, but uh, it's still beautiful. And uh, I did get a chance to try it on at the boutique and I fell in love because you can literally carry everything that you need in that bag. I did find it to be a little bit heavy, but still that size, the size I think is absolutely wonderful. I also like the new uh, Chanel 19 flat bag. Let me insert a picture of that. I really like this bag. There's just something about it. I like the fact that you do have a different type of hardware to it. It does have a little bit of a different detail. You know, I haven't had a chance to go into the boutique and try it on and see how it ends up working out on my body frame or anything like that. But uh, from the pictures, from the pictures so far, um, I really do like it. So um, big bags definitely, I feel, are coming back. And um, I mean, not that they really went anywhere. It's just that I feel that a lot of fashion houses are putting a lot of spotlight on the mini bags, you know, because like I said previously, the fact that you can end up going uh, for your daily essentials, the fact that you have a little bit more variety within your collection when you have a smaller bag, which I think is great, you know, but uh, I feel like now that maybe fashion houses are going to shift their attention, shift their gear into possibly designing more and more bags that have a little bit more, a little bit more, um, material, <laughs> a little bit more material, if you will. Uh, but uh, big old bags, big old bags make me so, so happy. You know, the only bummer is of course the price point because the larger the bag, sometimes the more expensive it is because you have a lot more materials, especially when it comes to Chanel. And let's be honest, I love a lot of these houses, but are they going to pass up the chance to charge an arm and a leg for a bigger bag? I don't think so. I think they're definitely gonna be like, oh yeah, the bigger the bag, the more we can charge but um, yeah big big bags I love them sometimes the bigger the better you know <laughs> and it's not that I don't like my minis like I said before because I do have a few of them and I do use them quite often but um, yeah the bigger the bags for sure <laughs> for sure of course there's another thing that you have to take into consideration the bigger it is sometimes it ends up just killing your shoulder because you might end up carrying a little too much kind of like me. You know, I like to be able to, to push the envelope and see just how much more I can fit in that bag. But anywho, I would love to know, what do you guys think? Do you think big bags are coming back? Do you think big bags are here to stay? Do you think that they're going to outshine the mini bags uh, that are very, very popular? Either way, let us know in the comment section down below. But awesome question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Too Dramatic 23 how do you feel about the Nano Speedy? All right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the Louis Vuitton Nano Speedy right now. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it is so incredibly cute and it's very deceiving because yes, it is small, but it still packs a punch. I know some people think that you can only carry maybe one or two small other goods, but I have seen people, I mean, be able to play that Tetris well and be able to carry their daily essentials. You know, of course, very compact, but still, I think it is awesome. The only thing that really bothers me about this bag is the fact that you can't remove the strap and the strap is also not adjustable. 
usable. I really wish that they would have incorporated that into the style because it would have made it a lot more user friendly, but I have heard of people actually tying a knot at the very top so that way they can carry their bag on their shoulder and it's a little bit higher up on their torso. I've also heard of people taking it into a shop to cut the strap to their, uh, you know, to, to how they want it. So there are options, there are ways that you can, you know, incorporate this handbag if you didn't like the length of, uh, of the strap that it has. But yeah, I really wish that they would have made it adjustable. And this bag is very elusive. It is very, very hard to find. And because of that, the prices on the pre-love market have skyrocketed. So when I first, uh, when I was first looking at this bag, it was right under a thousand dollars. I do believe it was was it $990 or $995? Currently, it retails for $1,100. But if you look on the pre-love market, you can find them for $2,200, $2,300. I've seen some for $2,700. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, that's that's kind of crazy. But if, if someone really wants to add it to their collection, they have that option, again, because it is so hard to find. But I think it is super, super cute. And in the past, I did think about adding it to my collection you know, but it's that strap uh, that is somewhat of a deal breaker for me just because I wanna be able to, I wanna be able to either move it around or take it off or something. But uh, even if it doesn't come with that, it's still, I still think it's super, super cute. But I would love to know, what do you guys think of the Nano Speedy? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you do have it, do you love it? Do you recommend it? Let us know that as well. But fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Tracy A. We know that you love small leather goods, but if you could only keep five out of your whole collection, which ones would they be and why? Um, all right, so usually with these scenarios, I tend to cheat. I'm not going to cheat. I'm gonna keep it to the five. I'm not even gonna do an honorable mention, all right? <laughs> but uh, the top five are my, uh, my forever small leather goods, if you will. A lot of these won't be a surprise. The first one being the Louis Vuitton six ring key holder in the monogram canvas. Uh, I I absolutely love it. I know it's very antiquated. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of it, uh, but as I've said in so many of my videos, I love the fact that it ends up keeping the interior of your handbag and other small leather goods that you're carrying, carrying in fabulous condition because the keys are housed in something like this. So this is like my ride or die small leather good. And um, you know, I also had someone ask me last week if I would recommend putting any type of uh, like clear nail polish on here just to kind of um, help it from not showing as much wear. Personally, I wouldn't. I know some people have, and that's great to each their own. Uh, but with something like this, the way that it ends up wearing, it's going to continue to happen over and over again. Plus, if you do, if let, let's say something ends up happening with this item, uh, maybe you know, with the with the key holders or something to that effect, and if you were to take it into Louis Vuitton, there is a chance that they would actually refuse uh, repairing it because, in a sense, you've altered it by adding that um, that clear coating, so I just, or that, uh, that nail polish. So I just wanna throw that out there just in case. But by far, this is my number one item. If I got rid of everything and only kept one, it would be this guy. So next up would be the key pouch in the monogram canvas because this was actually my very first, uh, my very first piece. And um, I love it to death. And as many of you know, it is incredibly, incredibly versatile and the possibilities are endless. So that would be number two. Number three would be the midi pochette in the Damia Ben. And the reason for the Damia Ben is because I absolutely love this print. It is my favorite print. This guy too has a lot of wear, especially Especially on the hardware, you have a lot of chips. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I wouldn't even get it repaired. And that gorgeous, gorgeous red interior, I think, is um, is definitely one of my favorite things. And just like the key pouch, this is very versatile. And I've even used this as a little handbag when I've gone uh, to Disneyland. So number three, number four would be. The Chanel Ozip coin purse in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Uh, and honestly, because I used to have full-size wallets, I was always a full-size wallet type of person. Then I went on to into medium-size wallets. Uh, but I really do appreciate compact wallets. So that's what I really end up gravitating towards the most nowadays. And with something like this, I like the fact that you can go from a full-size wallet into, into this and not have to worry about not being able to carry all of your wallet essentials. You know, so I think that these are wonderful, and um, this guy is also showing quite a bit of wear on the on the hardware there, uh, but I think it's great. So 
definitely uh, one of my favorite style of wallets. And last but not least, um, this one might surprise some of you, might, but it would be the Chanel Mini O pouch in the gold, uh, in the gold croc embossed leather with the gold hardware just because it is so incredibly gaudy. It is so incredibly just gorgeous, you know? And um, I love these little guys because just like the mini pochette, you can use it, you know, as a carry-all, um, or I'm sorry, as a catch-all. And uh, it has so much versatility. And just the color, the color just makes me drool like none other. So it would definitely be this guy as well. So those are my top five small leather goods or the five small leather goods that I would keep out of my entire collection. But I would love to know what are your top five? Let us know in the comment section down below. The fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Curiouser1002. I'm hoping to land my dream bag, the medium large classic flap in gold hardware and black caviar. Would you say it's smarter to buy in Europe or pre-loved? I'm planning to go to Europe in 2020, but with price increases, I wonder if I should even bother waiting for Europe. What are your thoughts on buying pre-loved versus in Europe? Um, all right, so this is definitely a tough one because brand new, I mean, you set the story. It's in perfect condition. And pre-loved, you can end up finding some awesome savings, whether it is used or brand new. Of course, it depends on the condition. It depends on the year, etc. But just like you said that these price increases do end up happening. Now, the thing about price increases unfortunately not only do they affect the prices in the boutique but they also affect the pre-love market but still I feel that on the pre-love market you can still find those uh, those amazing uh, those amazing deals because you have so many more to choose from you know whereas sometimes these boutiques might have maybe five on hand that are brand new but with a lot of these uh, with a lot of these sites or a lot of these consignment shops you have hundreds if not thousands of the same bag to choose from I also wrote down some numbers that I want to share with you that way you have a better idea of what what you can expect to pay if you were to buy it here versus buying it in Europe. Of course, it depends where in Europe, uh, but for example, if you were to buy the bag in Paris. So as of right now, the medium large retails for $5,600 plus tax in the States. It depends where you live. Some states have higher taxes, others have lower, some don't have any at all, but roughly here, it would be about 6,034. Now, if you were to buy the bag in Paris, it would be 4,800 euros, which roughly translates to 5,340 and 20. 21 cents. And I calculated this on Thursday. Of course, that is a rough estimate because sometimes uh, it might be off by a couple of cents. It might be off by a couple of dollars. But again, 5,340 and 21 minus VAT. So you're looking at a savings of anywhere from 700 to maybe $825 if you were to buy it in Europe or if you were to buy it in Paris versus buying it here in the United States. So here around 6,000 something over there, you're looking at anywhere from the $5,000 uh, price range, you know? So um, it's tough. It's really tough to say. And another thing to keep in the back of your mind that when you buy brand new, you do get the warranty. So if something happens, you can take it back into the boutique. And if you were to buy something pre-loved, if it is older than five years, according to Chanel, they can no longer service the item. Of course, that is a case by case scenario. But like I said before, that is something to keep in the back of your mind. And another thing to note, when you do come back into the United States, if you were to buy it in Europe and you go to uh, declare it on your customs form, there might be a chance that you will pay a fee on that, uh, on that amount as well. So again, I just want to throw that out there just in case. So my advice would be, if your heart is set on getting it while you're there, end up going for it. And if by chance you don't end up finding it, when you do get back to the States, you have a plethora to pick from when it comes on the pre-love market. Regardless, you will be able to get some type of savings. So I don't know if this ends up helping you out, but I'm really excited for you to go to Europe and I hope you have safe travels, happy shopping. And if you do end up getting your bag while you're there, congratulations. And I would love to know, what do you guys think? Do you think that by going on the pre-love market, you get a better savings? Or do you think by waiting and going to Europe, you get a better savings? Let us know in the comment section down below, but great question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Anya G. When I buy very expensive bags, to me, it would be a thousand pounds plus. I always go for a safe black or brown bag. Now with autumn upon us in England, I realize how much I need an autumn colored bag. So I bought two bags from Strawberry, East and West in medium in the color burgundy and the East and West stylist in bottle green. 
I use them as everyday bags. Now I realize how happy and stress-free they make me feel. I got two amazing quality leather bags in autumn colors at a price that doesn't make you cry and still look classy. What are your thoughts on Strawberry? All right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of both of these bags. Major, major congratulations on your newest pieces. I think that they are absolutely gorgeous. I am a huge, huge fan of Strathbury, and I actually talked about them in a previous video like a million years ago because uh, there is a bag that I love, and that's the Midi Tote. And what I really appreciate about this brand is the fact that they are very simple designs. They also have a type of uniqueness. They have these beautiful details, and not to mention a fabulous, fabulous price point, you know? So I, like I said before, I'm a huge, huge fan. And going back to the midi tote, let me insert a picture of that one as well. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the only reason why I haven't added it to my collection is because I haven't seen it in real life. And I have done quite a bit of research on this brand and on this bag, and I get like 50-50 uh, feelings on it. Some people really like it. Some people haven't had the best experience with this bag or with this brand, you know, so it does make me a little bit hesitant. It does make me nervous, you know, especially to, to buy a handbag online, something that I haven't had a chance to check out in person and see how it ends up looking on my body frame. You know, but at the same time, I'm thinking, should I just bite the bullet? Should I take a leap of faith and order it online? Because I am such, such a fan. And the colors that you have to pick from, that gorgeous, gorgeous burgundy, or the greens or the blues, I mean, I think that they're, they're beautiful. And they're not over the top colors. They're not obnoxious or anything like that. You know, and a lot of people talk about their quality, that it is great quality, again, for that price point. But I do have a couple of questions. For those of you that do have this brand, how is the leather? Do you find that it is a little too stiff? Does it end up uh, softening up as time goes by? Or do you end up seeing scratches very easily, especially because some of them don't have the pebbled leather? Let us know in the comment section down below. But once again, major congratulations on your newest bags. They are absolutely beautiful and I hope that you're enjoying them. And uh, I just love Strawberry, and hopefully I get a chance to add one of these beautiful bags to my collection. But again, if you guys have any information on this brand, if you like it, if you don't recommend it. Either way, let us know in the comment section down below. But great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Lila Rush. I'm thinking of getting the Speedy B25 in the Damien Bend print. The new ones come with the matte leather handles and shoulder strap. Any idea if it's more or at least have the same durability as the previous shiny leather? Uh, this is an awesome question. I've actually gotten this quite a bit on Instagram, but I did speak to a few different associates. I also spoke to a few different managers and they all pretty much said the same thing, that Louis Vuitton ended up changing the coating that they use on their treated leather to make it more durable. So yes, according to them, uh, they went with a matte look because it ends up wearing a lot better as time goes by. Because the shiny leather, um, if, if you end up looking, especially on the pre-love market you can really see it with the shiny leather i do think that it's beautiful but you end up seeing the wear a lot faster and you end up seeing that that clear coating starts to peel or if it doesn't peel it ends up turning a little bit hazy it turns a little bit cloudy so they said that by doing by making it a little bit more matte that way it won't end up happening and it won't end up showing uh, wear and tear as quickly. So I think it's pretty great, you know, and to be completely honest with you, even though I do like the shiny leather and I do think it's beautiful, out of the two, I actually prefer the matte look because in my eyes, in my personal opinion, I feel that the matte, heart, the matte uh, leather really makes the print stand out a little bit more. I feel that the caramel can really have its spotlight just because you don't have that shiny leather that comes through on the handles or anything like that, you know? So I absolutely love, love, love the matte look. And if it makes it that much more durable, then I am definitely a fan. But I would love to know, for those of you that do have newer Damien Ben pieces and you do have the, the matte leather, have you noticed a difference? Have you noticed that it ends up wearing a little bit better? Have you noticed any type of durability? Because all of my pieces, all of my Damien Ben pieces, they're all pretty much uh, the older ones and uh, they're not as matte as the new one. So if you do find yourself in the boutique and you do see that there are two different types of leather when it comes to this beautiful print, uh, it's just that the older one is the shiny leather and the newer one is the matte one. And from what I was told, they are moving towards going all matte when it comes to this print. So I thought I'd throw that out there as well. But again, let me know in the comment section down below if you have found that the Damia Ben, uh, that the matte leather is a lot more durable. But great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys, that does it for Minx Money 
Monday q and I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. I also wanted to give you a heads up because there is a chance that this might be happening, uh, but November so far is not looking so great for me, especially for my schedule. My work schedule is a little bit over uh, overloaded, but hopefully it ends up uh, working itself out and it's not as bad. Uh, but there is a chance that you won't be, that you won't end up seeing me as much during November. I will try my hardest to still, you know, uh, do my weekly videos. But if for some reason or another, you guys don't see me on a Monday, uh, just know that it is because of that. But still, I will try my hardest to make everything work. But anywho, uh, if that does end up happening, I will end up putting a post on the community post page of uh, my YouTube channel. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.